it's a very evolving time, I think, because I've said this on Fix Radio a couple of times now, that in the last five years, the industry as a whole, uh, I mean, it's changed more in five years than it has in the previous 30. It's the, the difference is huge. So that's basically what we're going to be talking about, just some of the differences, some of the things that we see coming up in the future and how we're going to, I guess, motivate the industry and how we're going to plan on changing the industry and what we're going to do moving forwards, I suppose. <clears throat> Rate of change, absolutely key topic. So... I think one of the examples we, we used previously, Kieran, in a, a presentation we did, um, if you compare the adoption of landline telephones in the US, it took nearly 100 years. And if you compare that into smartphones or mobile phones, it was a few years to get to the same level of adoption. That's how quick we as human beings are, are starting to really adopt technologies. I started 30 years ago in the industry and... Uh, a rewire in the house then was just power and lighting and you'd have a single light point in that room and maybe a couple of sockets and if you they were lucky they'd have an aerial point maybe a tv uh, telephone point yeah yeah okay and so here we are now 30 years later um the the evolution of electrician they've had to upskill they're, they're putting data networks in because as deepak just said you know the the connectivity level of uh of the internet everything in a home is is connected uh to even putting um you know, full AV systems into a home where mm. they had audio, visual, um, sound, you know, surround sound. So the electrician um, has had to evolve because technology has evolved. And, it, you know, the technology is evolving to help us combat the climate change and sustainability issues that we're seeing. That's the thing, because like, if you look in the last 30 years, mm. I keep going back to this thing of the last 30 years, but even the amount, we, electricians haven't had to upskill. They haven't really... Mm -hmm you were qualified and that was it. You didn't really, there was no new, I mean, technology does evolve, but it's evolved in the last five years so much faster and it will do in the, in the next five years. We've just got to, a, do you see what? we've got to a point where we're evolving so fast. And I think there's a lot of contractors who are maybe not scared to keep up, but just, it's evolving at such a pace. It's almost like if you don't keep up, you're just going to get left behind because it's evolving so quick. Absolutely. To change subjects a bit, you look at a uh, plumber years ago, they just did plumbing and then they do gas boilers. So once they do gas boilers, start looking at the PCB, replacing the valves and the internals of, of the boiler. Likewise, electrician, as the technology moves, if they don't start evolving and if they don't embrace the change, then they're, they're actually keeping themselves out of um, a potential business revenue stream. We start to look at some of these key topics. Sustainability is becoming one of the key points of discussion for definitely for large organizations large corporate environments that we work in we at schneider electric we're really fortunate to win uh, a sustainability award so we're really proud of that but what we're trying to do is actually support our customers whether it's electricians contractors um with products and systems and and really giving them the ability to meet their sustainability goals because they are becoming key topics for all of us, whether we're in commercial environments, in um, res residential environments or industrial environments. And we're starting to see that coming into our homes where energy is becoming more expensive. Mm -hmm. The way that we use the energy is becoming a key topic. Efficiencies are becoming topical. Um, but then we add to that, and what, this is the point that we really see in the residential spaces, the control element. We like to have comfort controls. You know, if you ask many people, have they heard of these uh, assistants at home, whether it's Google, Amazon, etc., these home sort of artificial assistants. Massively popular. The adoption of these technologies is phenomenal. Within a few years, most people have started to adopt these type of technologies, <clears throat> whether it's really simple, uh, and it's just a, a, a plug-in socket adapter that's IoT or internet connected that you can control some lights or lamps, or whether you start to go into sort of the environments where you can start to schedule and control heating, lighting, etc. And when we start to talk about this in the, in the, the sort of context of sustainability, it's a point that we can't really sort of ignore now. There's a, a significant evolution that's coming. It's needed around the residential space that electricians can really take advantage of, which means we, we start to talk about electric vehicle charging, photovoltaics, energy mm. tariffs and rates, and how does this all come together? And how do we make um, <clears throat> our, our, our households really benefit from some of the efficiencies that can be made and the 
what are the products that are used to, to really to, to do this? And this is a, a, a space that's significantly evolving for the electrician. But the issue we have, and it's the same kind of issue we have in some older commercial buildings that we're doing residential, all these different devices work in isolation. So you might say, you know, might have a particular manufacturer of light bulb that's connected to your smart speaker, but the plug's made by a different manufacturer as well. Mm -hmm. And that smart speaker is actually going to be the aggregator of all these signals. So it's almost like a universal translator if you're a Star Trek fan where you just go, tick, you know, touch your chest and you can talk to the Klingons or whoever. So it's a communicator for all these different networks and all these different languages. Uh, moving forward, we probably need to look at a, a more uh, resilient um, home controller that isn't just based on um, on, uh, on the web. Because if you do lose that connection to the web, you need local control to be able to control the home. Are we talking about a smart building? In a perfect world, yeah. These are the seeds of a smart of a, of a smart home moving forward, aren't they? In the commercial space, we've seen the evolution of the, the building. So we, we talk about smart buildings in, in industrial commercial environments. And we're, we're pretty much there where we've got control, we've got automation. Um, we can sort of start to talk about what is um, a smart building. We can say it's related to IoT. So multiple sensors in a building that are connecting devices they're embedded into the fabric of the building and there's a, a whole load of information exchange and then what starts to come from that is you get predictive analytics so once you've started to get this connected platform and you've got the ability to 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 retrieve data you can then start to use that data to start to get <clears throat> predictive analytics Topics that then start to come into that open standards architecture. You've already touched on it with some of the residential systems like um, your Alexa devices that are talking to multiple platforms. Um, and then it goes on. And in that commercial industrial space, it starts to then lead into next generation power, how the building fixtures fitting start to talk to each other, whether it's lighting, you know, info screens, cameras, power over ethernet topics start to come into it. Um, you've got intelligent lighting where you've got presence detection, etc. And then it all starts to come together with that intelligent building management system. So in the commercial environments, you know, we've seen this evolution. It's, it's, it's out there. There's more of a drive in terms of sustainability in that space because businesses have been conscious of the energies that they're using um, and it's a significant part of their expenditure when you've got multiple estates. When I think of commercial, I think of you think of things like the Gherkin, huge mm -hmm. buildings, definitely. Which those are where, for <coughs> me, I think when you, when you look at energy saving, and you know, so the polar bears can keep walking on ice and stuff. You drive past them at, I, I mean, we do it every night. You drive past it down Euston Road, and you look. It's an enormous skyscrapers. Every single light's on. There's not a single person in the building, and I'm just like, everyone bangs on about eco-friendly, and you know. But it, the, th it, the everybody knows about it, but it's not. People aren't reacting to it yet, if that makes any sense. It's like do I, everyone knows about it. I've mm -hmm. oh, got to save the planet and save the whales and all this stuff. But you drive, you honestly drive down Euston Road, every single all the lights on. There's one lonely cleaner on the fiftieth floor, <laughs> and you do ask the question. It's obviously not driving home to the right people yet. But I think that topic is quite well. Well, <clears throat> it's well understood in the commercial environment. Um, most large organisations have got their own sustainability topics now and their own mm. sort of goals to achieve, whether it's yearly um, or whether they've got five-year plans. But in the residential space, we are closer to that bill Definitely. that we receive 100%. every month and we mm -hmm. see the energy cost increasing. And I think, you know, it's, it's a well-spoken about topic in that commercial environment. We've got multiple technologies that really help our customers and end users try and meet their sustainability topics and goals, whether it's, for example, simple metering um, and putting that onto a BMS system so that you can understand your energy consumption, even down to, you know, I mean, we'll come on to, to uh, technology topics at some point, but, you know, there's systems out there that we're bringing to market that allow you to understand the electrical equipment or the the circuits and the the loads and load characteristics down at final circuit levels so you can even understand sitting in a remote location what is the socket circuits doing in the east wing on the first floor of building one this is one of the ways that we say 
electricity starts to meet digital. Mm-hmm. And, and Schneider Electric sort of have a, you know, a, a way that we sort of say, well, when electricity meets digital, it starts to bring us new ways of thinking, new ways of distributing, and new ways of saving that energy that we've got available to us. The energy starts to become visible because you can now see what's happening where, when, and how. You can start to take better control of it because it's connected. So you can become smarter. You can be better controlled on what you're doing with that energy. It opens up a whole new world.